So here's our first problem. Brittany throws a ball horizontally at 20 meters per second from a height of 1.5. Oh, sorry. So how are we going to solve this? We're going to go through the same steps that we did before. First step, read the problem. Okay, so I'd already started that. Uh, from a height of 1.50 meters, how far will it travel horizontally before it hits the ground? And as usual, ignore air resistance. Okay, we've read the problem. What's the next thing we do? Let's draw a diagram. So we've got Brittany throwing a ball. I'm going to draw ground level. Here's Brittany throwing a ball uh, at 20 meters, horizontally at 20 meters per second. So the ball is being thrown horizontally at 20 meters per second from a height of 1.50 meters. So the initial height is 1.50 meters above the ground. How far will it travel horizontally before it hits the ground? So what's this ball going to do? Qualitatively, what's the motion going to look like? You've thrown a ball before or thrown something, I would imagine. What's it going to do? We expect it to move over like this and come down and hit the ground. So the question is asking, uh, how far will it travel horizontally before it hits the ground? In other words, we're looking for that distance. How far horizontally is the change in the, the position um, from here to here? Okay, great. There we go. What's the next thing we do? Define a coordinate system. Where do we want to put our origin? Typically, if we're going to have uh, things to the right as positive and up as positive, which is the typical way we'll solve things. We'll put our origin in the leftmost, lowestmost point of interest in the problem. That means everything else will be taking place to the right and above the origin. That just usually, that just makes things easier. So why don't we put the origin right below the initial position of the ball at ground level. So that will be our origin for our x and y. And and as, as usual, we'll pick x as horizontal, uh, to the right as positive, y as vertical, um, uh, upwards as positive. Okay, great. I'm going to move these, well, I guess I'll, I'll do the next step, and then I'll move the, the problem. Uh, what's the next thing we do? We write down the variables. Now, you might think, okay, we had six variables in one dimension. We should have 12 variables in two dimensions. Except there's only one time. Time is the same in uh, the x motion as the y motion. So we actually have one fewer than that. We have 11 variables. But they look very similar to the variables that we used to use. So let's write them down in the same order. Except rather than v and a, we'll have v sub x, a sub x, the x and x components. So what do we have? x naught, x. V not just v naught, but v x naught, or v naught x, either one, it doesn't matter. v x naught is the initial value of the x component of the velocity. v naught x is the x component of the initial velocity, and they're the same thing. So it doesn't matter. You could write v naught x, v x naught, they mean the same thing. v x, and then a x, and then I'll hold off on t, I'll write t at the end. And then all the y variables. Why not? y, vy naught, vy, ay, and then finally t. And again, let's try to get used to always saying them, putting them down in the same order. x naught x, vx naught vx, ax, y naught y, vy naught v, vy naught vy, vy naught v dot y, uh, vy, ay, and then t. Okay, great. Now, what do we know? And what do we not know? Well, x naught. Do we know the initial x position? Well, looking here, here's the initial position right on the y-axis, so x naught is going to be 0. What about y naught? Do we know the initial y position? Well, we know it is directly 1.5 meters above the origin, so y naught is 1.5 meters. 1.50 meters. X. What is X? X is the final X position. We don't know that. But you might, you might say immediately, ah, but that's actually what we're looking for. Okay? So, we want to solve for X at the very end. Y. What is the height of the final position? Well, we know that it hits the ground, and so that's going to be zero. Our final Y value is zero. 
That was never stated here. What does it say? It says, hits the ground. So because we know it's going to hit the ground and we set our origin at the ground level, we know our final height, our final y value is zero. Vx naught, that is the x component of the initial velocity. Our initial velocity is a horizontal vector. All right, remember, a horizontal vector. What are the components of a horizontal vector? Hopefully you've looked at the homework, especially the, um, the, the uh, practice problems. What are the components of a horizontal vector, or a vector that's only along the x-axis? Well, it's going to be, the x component will be 20 meters per second. And what's the y component of that? Hopefully you can get, to, you can figure this one out. Zero. Zero y component. What is the final x component of the velocity? Well, over here, it's going to be coming down like this coming down in that direction, some people might say, oh, well, it hits the ground and it stops, so Vx is going to be zero. But we've got to be very careful about this. Remember, these equations assume a uniform acceleration. So it's re they, the equations are really only describing the motion just after the ball is released. So here's Brittany, she's throwing the ball just after the ball leaves her hand, so her hand is no longer accelerating it, so that now gravity is the only thing accelerating it, and just, just before it touches the ground. When it touches the ground, there's going to be a more complicated acceleration because of the interaction with the ground. So we're talking about just after it leaves her hand and just before it touches the ground. That's the region where it is accelerating uniformly. So. It's still just moving, just before it touches the ground. But what's the x component? Well, we're not sure. What's the y component? We're not sure about that either. What about the acceleration? Well, we know the acceleration is only the acceleration due to gravity. And what's the acceleration due to gravity? It is down with a magnitude of 9.80 meters per second squared. Well, again, what are the components of a vector pointing straight down? Hopefully you remember this. The x component is zero. Or not remember, but I hope, I hope you could figure this out, especially, like I said, from those, the practice problems that are, that are all about the vectors and vector directions and things like that. And a sub y will be negative 9.80 meters per second squared. Very good. And then t, what's t? Well, we have no idea the time. We don't know how long it's going to take. All right, very good. So let's put the equations up and see how to solve for x. Uh, let me just apologize. I know there's a bright light uh, shining in the middle of the screen here. That's because of the projector um, uh, shining that on there. And I can't get rid of that, but still have the, uh, the equations up there so I can put them up and take them down. I'd have to write them down every time. So I do apologize for that uh, shiny spot. Anyways, all right, what do we want? We want x. And again, we need to find an equation with an x in it and where we know everything else. Well, if we look at the y components, none of these have an x in it, so we know we can't use these to solve for x. Come over here. Can we use these? One of these. Well, it doesn't have an x in it. Remember, x, not a subscript x, but the variable x. Can we use this one? Well, we don't know t. We don't know v sub x, and we don't know t. What about this one? Well, again, we don't know t. What about this one? Well, it's got an x in it. Well, maybe we could use this one. Well, let's think about this. What is a sub x? a sub x is 0. If we try to use this one, a sub x is 0, and that multiplies the x minus x naught, which makes that whole term 0. It removes the x from the equation. So we can't use that one to solve for x either. Well, what are we going to do? There is no equation that will give us what, what we're looking for, x. But, hold on a second. Notice that when we talked about this equation, we said that we can't use this one because we don't know t. Well, let's see. There's, there's the x that we want. We know x naught. We know vx naught. We know a sub x. Well, we know a sub x is going to be 0. That will cancel that one out. But still, there's a t over here. We don't know t. So we can't solve for x because we don't know t. Is there a way that we can solve for t? 
with things that we know. This is going to be a very, very consistent kind of way to solve these problems. Let's take a look at that. We know there's nothing over here that we can use to solve for t. We've just gone through those. What about these? Is there anything over here that we could use to, sol to solve for t? Well, not this one because we don't know v sub y. Uh, this one, it's got a t in it. Could we use this? Well, we don't know v sub y. This one doesn't even have a t in it, so we know we can't use that one. Well, what about this one? Well, yeah. Do we know y? Yes. Why not? Yes. V, why not? Yes. A, y? Yes. T is the only thing we don't know. So we could use this equation to solve for t. Then once we have t, we're kind of stuck with the fact that we have to solve for something and then use that thing in another equation. So we've got to be extra careful to make sure we don't make any mistakes, both finding t and then finding x. Once we find t, we can come back over here and put it in here and use that t to solve for x. All right, great, we've got a plan. So let's use this, where is it? The third equation here to solve for t. So what do we have? Before taking all these down, I'll, let me just at least write the equation down. So y, we know y is zero. Y not, 1.50. V, Y not, V, Y not is zero, so that's zero. So all we have is basically zero equals Y not plus one half A, Y, T squared. So what's that equation? We have zero equals Y not, which is 1.50 meters, plus one half A, which is negative 9.80 meters per second squared, T squared, and we want to solve that for T. So let me take the equations down to give us a little more room, and we'll do that. Let's take this part over to the other side. We've got 1 half times 9.8, that's 4.9. With a negative sign, bringing it over here makes it positive 4.90 meters per second squared. T squared equals 1.50 meters. And then dividing both sides by 4.90 meters per second squared, we've got t squared equals 1.50 meters divided by 4.90. And then dividing by meters per second squared is the same as multiplying by the inverse, multiplying by second squared over meter. And we can see then that the meters cancel. Dividing this out, we get 0 0.306 seconds squared. Taking the square root, we get plus or minus 0 0.553 seconds. Which time do we want? We want the time after it was thrown. So we're going to take the positive time, which I've put over here. T is 0 0.553 seconds. But once again, what does that negative time mean? Is there any way that we can figure out why we might get a negative answer? Well, if we were to trace our path backwards, again, assuming constant acceleration, not that it was actually thrown, but from the motion, what would the motion have looked if we could trace the motion backwards? Well, this would come back over here. And it would have been at a final position of y at the same amount of time before it was thrown. So 0.553 seconds after it's thrown, it would be at a height of 0. And 0.553 seconds before it was thrown, it would have been at a height of zero if it had been moving with a constant acceleration the whole time. Okay, great. Well, we've got the time. Now let's go back to the equations and uh, solve the x motion using the time that we found. Coming back to our third x equation, we notice that x naught is zero and a sub x is zero. And so all we have is x equals vx naught, which is 20 meters per second, times t, our calculated value of 0.553 seconds. Notice the seconds cancel, leaving us with meters, and our answer is then, multiplying those out, 11.1 meters. Great, excellent. Does that seem like a reasonable result? Throwing at 20 meters per second at a height of 1.5 meters, it goes 11 meters? Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. Okay, very, very good. Let's try another one. 